sequence of battle. There's a grid, so I, you can turn the grid off. I really like the combat grid. To me, it's a good visual indicator when I ran into combat. Um, sometimes I mistakenly run into combat range and combat will just begin. So it's a nice little boom, combat is starting. And it also shows you, you can see everybody is in a square. Um, this is cover. There's a lot of cover in this game. Cover comes really handy. It doesn't protect you from getting hit, but it can help the enemy miss um, and reduce some of the damage that you take. So it's important as you move around, like you can see I can move here. These little orange lines are telling you who can shoot at you. So this would be a very bad spot to move to. There's no cover. I can be shot at by one, two, three, four, five, six different people. And eventually you'll see a mech come up here, which will make it seven. Bad spot. You don't, if you can avoid it, do not want to move into the open. Uh, and one nice thing about the interface, well, I said a few nice things about the interface, is it shows you how much cover you get and in which directions you get the cover. So this means I have about half cover here. Um, there are different areas of cover, some large, some small. This one you can see, you can zoom into. Um, you get coverage from both the front and the side although you still can get shot at. So in this particular scenario, there's a lot of enemies. So no matter where you move in the beginning, you're in risk of getting hit by all of them. Um, this back here is what you're waiting for. This is a basically a vehicle that's been damaged and she's trying to repair this big gun. And then this big gun has a very wide range. So once you get to, I think it's the third round, You'll have access to this big gun and it will save your butt otherwise you will never survive this battle um, so one thing i mentioned when we went over character creation is uh, if you have access to this and hopefully you do because they are very helpful in the early game there are a series of gold equipment in here um, there's one of each type of weapon and they're all better than the starting weapon that you chose. So if you don't have these, hopefully you chose a starting weapon that matches the skills that you have, because that will come in very handy. You can see here on the right, it says it requires one small arms, which is red because I don't have it. And then it says failed requirement penalty. The hit chance goes down by 10%. The critical chance is basically zero. And the strike rate, the strike rate which is how you build up one of the skills that you have is minus 100% also. So basically, you do not want to use this gun unless you have skill for it. Uh, I suppose they let you do it in case you're in a pinch. Maybe you're all out of ammo, and the only thing you have left is this revolver. You might hit with it, but it's not going to do a lot of damage, and you're probably not going to crit. Um, so definitely want to line up your skill with your weapon. Uh, also, a thing to note here is the damage is shown on the upper right. So as I had mentioned earlier, weapon damage is derived entirely by the weapon. Having additional, I could have 10 assault rifle and it's not going to make this gun do more damage. What 10 assault rifle skill means, or 10 automatic weapon means, is I can equip a weapon that requires 10 automatic weapons. Um, that's the skill. So, in that scenario, usually, the higher the skill required, the more damage the weapon does. So it's kind of regulated that way. If you want to level up and you really want to throw all your skill points into assault rifle, for instance, if you did get it up to five, you most likely aren't going to find an assault rifle that even requires two or three for quite a while. Um, so you're just not going to get a benefit out of having a really high assault rifle skill in the beginning of the game. I go with two just for the extra hit chance. That's really the only thing that transfers over. If we look at skills again, big guns, I went from a 3% hit chance to a 6% additional hit chance. And I find that that helps a little bit. I could very easily have just stuck with one 
the perk. You do open up a perk, but you can see here, these are your perks. They're white, meaning I have access to them, but they're not, I don't actually have them. I have to pick here and you click on it and it will confirm that you want to activate it and it will use a perk point. Um, so until I do that, I don't even get to use these perks. So uh, that was something I did not realize early on either. So adding two big guns opens up the perk to me. I don't get to benefit from that perk. So you can keep the skill at one in the very beginning, but you do want to level up the skills that you plan on using because you're going to find equipment that you just, you either can equip or you won't be able to get all these penalties here. Um, so in this case, I'm looking for, here's the flamethrower, which uses four AP. Um, I put that in my secondary weapon because you can, in some scenarios, fire off your main weapon and then have enough AP left to fire off your secondary weapon. So I like the idea of having a secondary weapon that uses less AP. If you have two weapons that use the same amount of AP, it's not really that beneficial, unless maybe one has a, a different effect that you want to make use of. Um, and it doesn't matter if you equip these, you can, as I'm doing in combat, you can move them around. You're not stuck with it for combat. I, I don't think that's true with a, the actual like, armor. I, can, yeah, I can't swap out wearable equipment until the battle's done. Um, but I can swap out my weapons, luckily, or you'd be stuck with whatever you went into battle with. So if they run out of ammo, you're kind of SOL. Um, so this one, as you can see, the War Pig, if you hold left shift down by default, I think it is, um, it will compare. So where was my other heavy machine gun? Here it is. So the Bunker Buster is what they gave me. I really like this. Another nice feature of the interface is when you're comparing, it shows you on both sides what's worse and what's better. This one is clearly better. The War Pig is clearly a better weapon. The damage is higher, the ammo capacity higher, the base hit chance is higher, and the penetration, which doesn't matter too much because it's only from five to seven. And you don't meet a lot of heavily armored people in the very beginning. You will definitely later. Um, so another thing to keep in mind here is this is not only 10 to 14 damage, but it's 10 to 14 damage per shot that hits. So this fires off 10 bullets each time you fire, where the other one only fired off nine. So sometimes you might see like, oh, like 10 to 14. If they both said 10 to 14, the war pig would still be better because it does it 10 times instead of nine. So all those numbers come into play. So basically when I fire this weapon at a target, it's going to shoot 10 bullets and each of those bullets has a chance to hit. They each have a chance to miss and they each have a chance to crit. Um, so in this case, more bullets is good, but they also use ammo. So the ammo count is 60. Um, uh, you'll see when I go back to the combat screen, it shows you how much ammo you have and it tells you the ammo type. So this uses 762 which is right here, I have 270 rounds of ammo. This is something to keep in mind, especially with if you want to use something like a shotgun um, or the flamethrower or a rocket launcher, you will very quickly run out of ammo, um, which is another good reason to vary your party. If, for instance, if all of my party members, when I got to four, if we all used heavy machine guns and we all used 7.62 ammo, we would run out of ammo quickly and then all this other ammo would just be useless so besides rounding out your skills also keep in mind that your guns do use up ammo so you want to try to keep them balanced um, so I have the flamethrower and the heavy machine gun on the freak and the mime has an SMG called the nailer but the hailstorm as we will see same thing it's 7 to 10 times 6, and the penetration is higher. And one thing, it's not marked to green. I wish it worked so it would stand out more, but this has a 25% chance to apply shocked, which I guess it's hard to compare which one's better, but in this case, the nailer has none. So obviously, a 25% chance to apply shocked is better than no chance to do anything else. Um, 
So I am going to equip the submachine gun here. Uh, and this uses 9mm ammo. So I have 9mm ammo here and 762, so I find it's a nice balance. I don't run, I don't burn through ammo as quickly as would I would if they both use the same weapon. Um, I don't give her a secondary weapon because this the AP is on the top right here. The AP is only four. I don't think there's anything. Yeah, the the pump shotgun is two. Another benefit to using a pump shotgun, but also it has a smaller range. So the range of the pump shotgun is only ten and a half, and this is twelve. So get a little extra range um, for a few extra action points, but I'm fine with that trade. So. We swapped out our weapons. As you can see, here's the ammo count, and here's your secondary weapon. So in my case, for the mime, she would just punch you. If I ran out of bullets, I'll switch to my punch. Um, so in combat here, what I'm gonna do is move my mime here. This is the options here. So I can ambush someone from here, it costs four AP, and then any extra AP remaining, I get an additional 5% hit chance, which is nice for an ambush so you don't miss. Um, so you want to keep this number in mind. Another good thing that they do is I'll show you on the bottom. So you can see I have my action points remaining in blue, but when I hover over an action, they go to white to show me which it's going to use. In this case, it's a final action, so it would use however many are left. If I want to attack, you know, the, you can see it's only going to use four, and then that's a very clear visualization of how many are left. So in this case, if I don't want the additional hit points uh, or hit chance, I can attack this person and then ambush. And that's what I, I do want to do. Um, it shows you that white bar is the range of the damage that it would do if I hit all my shots at the max damage. So, just because it shows that Dorsey Killer almost dead at the end of this, they probably will still be alive unless I crit all my shots and then they will die. But that white bar um, will just give you an idea of how much damage you'll do. And then if you're out of range, you can see this red circle. It, it, it does a nice job of not only saying out of range, but it doesn't show me even the damage. So I can see here, I can hit this person. I'm gonna do a lot of damage to them but I can't hit this person because they're out of range. Um, so I used some action points to get here. I'm going to fire, you just fire by clicking. Um, you can use a skill, this is your quick slot. This is the med hypo, this will just automatically self inject it and try to heal me up, but I don't need that. And then if I had a skill, it would be under your abilities. Um, I don't have those. So basically I'm just gonna left click on this person, trying to shoot them. There we go, you can see I added shock. Didn't do quite as much damage as it said. Um, I could fire again, but what I'm going to do is just go into ambush. Now my freak is a different story. The heavy machine gun has its ammo count here. It takes six to fire. Um, but the nice thing I like about this heavy machine gun is it will spray out here so not only am I hitting this person but it has the potential to hit some people behind it as well um, so I'm just going to again left click on this person you can see it not only killed my target but shot all the way through and I got a two for one deal which is awesome but I don't have enough AP um, it costs six to fire I only have four left so what I could do if there were people still in range, this is why I like your main weapon costing us more AP or vice versa, your secondary weapon costing less AP because now I could potentially, if they were, say that they were left on like 10 health, I could shoot up my flamethrower. But you can see here, the range of the flamethrower won't reach anybody else. So I'm going to stick with my main weapon and instead of ambushing, which I can't because ambush costs the amount of your weapon costs. Um, defend is usable. You have two other options. If you don't want to ambush or you can't ambush, 
You can always defend. Defend just means increase my evasion for however many AP I have left. So even if you only have one left, you'll get 5% more. Whereas prepare, instead of increasing your evasion, it will use up to two. So even though I have four left here, I won't get four additional action points um, for your next round. In this case, I know there's still a lot of enemies out there. Having played this, I also know this mech comes in this round. So I want to take as little damage as possible because I don't want to die in the very first combat round. So I will also um, So here comes the mech. This is my turn. It's now over. And this is the next round of combat. So fortunately for me, it looks like this first combat is pretty generous. All these enemies target NPCs that are not part of the group. So them dying is not, it's, it's just really setting up the story for you. Come on, you piece of it doesn't affect your party. The so we, we survived, as you see, I didn't Almost even take any it. damage to my two mains. Um, unfortunately, this weapon is still not fixed. So she's over here. This is Major Prasad. She's trying to fix it. So we really just have to survive one more round. Um, it doesn't show you here, but the, the radius of this is pretty much all of these people here. Um, or if they were to move over or they move over, I could get everybody. So I'm gonna focus my fire. I don't know why my ambush didn't trigger over here. It should have triggered when they moved into range. But I am going to focus my fire over here to try to get rid of some of these people. Oh, look at that. I crit, and then that guy shot. I get to shoot again. Beautiful start so far. Not only did I finish off two people, but I have enough to hide. Um, so again, it increases my evasion. I, I, there's not as many people on my side anymore, so I'm definitely going to get shot at this round. Um, but luckily, those two people are gone. We have Freak here. I'm going to shoot. I, I, I tend to focus on trying to finish somebody off. Um, so since this person is damaged, the potential of them not doing any damage to me next round is more important than possibly taking this person down to half health. So hopefully I won't miss. I did not. Well, I missed some shots, but um, so now. We took out three different enemies, and there's only three left, right? So that gives us a better chance of surviving the next round. I am going to defend and hopefully, hopefully, dodge any bullets that come my way. All right. Yep, they're shooting at all the people that aren't my group. Man, that thing has a lot of ammo, doesn't it? All right. There we go. So, I did take some damage, but he's still pretty healthy. My mime is completely healthy. Um, one thing that I haven't been doing yet is moving, changing the order. Not moving, but because it's a round-based turn, I don't have to go freak to mime to gun. I can actually start with the heavy gun. So, you have to be strategic. For instance, if my mime was sitting here, and I knew that firing this thing was going to kill my mine, then I would make sure I go over here, I would move the mine out of the way, if I could, uh, if it had action points to do it, and then I could go to the back to the gun. Or if I wanted to um, fire something or maybe heal myself, I could go to the mine here, or to the, to the clown here if I wanted to be super safe, and I could do my med hypo heal myself and then switch back to the gun. So you can keep doing that until you, they run out of action points. And then you can keep doing that until everybody runs out of action points. And then it'll be your turn's over. Or you can just click end turn if you're done. Uh, I don't ever really do that. So you can see here, targeting this thing, I just click attack. I don't, if you, if you don't click attack, then you have to target it on one person. If you click this little target, you can move it around freely. So I could fire it over here and hit practically nobody. 
you can also, if if this mech was over more, I could try to aim it like in the middle to make sure I got everybody. So sometimes I've had one person straggler here, or that person still live, and you can just barely move it to cover everybody. So whatever it shows here is is who it's going to hit, or at least attempt to hit. There's always a chance that they evade it, but there's the absolute guarantee that this shot will hit these people, these enemies, and they just might evade it, or the armor might take it down, um, or you might just miss. But this gun, I don't think this gun misses because it's a big explosion. So, in this case, I can see everyone that's in the red circle that is still alive. If I fire this, it's going to essentially kill these three, and then the combat will be done.